throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. The ocean is a cornerstone to the culture of the various Inuit peoples indigenous to the Arctic Circle. Their way of life and survival is largely dependent on the many creatures that live beneath the waves, such as fish, seals, and whales. So it comes as no surprise that one of the most important figures of Inuit mythology reigns supreme over the sea and all of its creatures. Though she is known by many different names throughout the vast region, she is widely referred to as Sedna. Sedna lives in a spirit realm beneath the sea, with her dog as her chief companion. She controls the balance between the sea creatures who wish to live, and the people on land who must hunt and eat the sea creatures in order to survive. Sedna, like the sea, is volatile and quick to shift her mood, and is less than loving towards mortals, as she manifests her rage and sadness by withholding the ocean's bounty from hunters, or by creating violent storms upon the sea. But her disdain towards mankind is not without its reasons, for though her tale varies greatly among the Inuit communities, each version contains Sedna having her fingers or more severed before she herself is hurled into the freezing ocean. In perhaps the most widespread telling of Sedna's tale, Sedna lives a peaceful life with her father, Anguta, growing up to be a beautiful woman with many suitors vying for her hand in marriage. But none of them could touch her proud heart much to her father's annoyance. Finally, at the breaking of the ice in the spring, a stranger arrived and proceeded to entice her with promises of wealth, comfort, food, and soft furs to be dressed in and rest upon. Sedna could not resist such offers, and they went together over the vast sea. When at last they had reached the stranger's home, Sedna discovered that her spouse had shamefully deceived her. He was not a human at all, but a great bird spirit. Her new home was not built of beautiful pelts, but was covered with wretched fish skin, full of holes that gave free entrance to the wind and to the snow. Instead of soft reindeer skins, her bed was made of poorly tanned hides and she had to live on putrid fish brought to her by the birds. Too soon she discovered that she had thrown away her opportunities when in her foolish pride she had rejected the Inuit youth. When a year had passed and the sea was again stirred by warmer winds, Anguta left his country to visit his daughter. Sedna greeted him joyfully and told him of the terrible conditions she was put through, and she besought him to take her back home. Quickly, he took Sedna back into his boat, and they quickly left the country which had brought so much sorrow to her. In some stories, Sedna's father killed her husband, while in others he merely stole her away whilst the bird spirit was out hunting. Regardless, upon discovery of Sedna's absence, the birds flew high in great numbers and stirred up a heavy storm. The sea rose in immense waves that threatened the pair with death and destruction. In this mortal peril, her father determined to offer Sedna to the birds and flung her overboard. She clung desperately to the edge of the boat with a death grip. Scared for his own life, Anguta then took his blade and cut off her fingers at the knuckles. 
falling into the sea. The bits of her fingers were then transformed into the seals, walruses, and whales that filled the northern oceans. At last, the storm subsided, where the seabirds thought Sedna had drowned. In truth, however, Sedna sank to the bottom of the Arctic Ocean and became a powerful goddess ruling over the tides and the marine animals that make their home in the sea. This is but one of many legends told of the sea goddess. In other versions, she is stricken with insatiable hunger, leading to her attacking her own father, followed by him throwing her into the sea after severing her fingers. A different version, told in the Nasilic region, depicts her as a mistreated orphan girl who is mutilated by villagers who then attempt to drown her. No matter the story told, Sedna is subject to both emotional and physical abuse. But as a result of this ruthless mistreatment, she becomes a powerful spirit whom even the mightiest of hunters must placate. Sedna's realm beneath the sea is called Adlevun, as are the spirits of the dead who reside there. Her father, with whom she eventually reconciled, acts as a guide for the spirits of the deceased, who must stay in Adlevun for the course of one year before they can move on. Soaked with salt water, her long, thick hair becomes badly matted, and with no fingers she is unable to comb her hair. Whales, pinnipeds, and other sea creatures become easily tangled in her hair, granting them refuge from hunters. When Sedna is depressed or enraged, she will keep these animals from mankind. When game becomes scarce, the only way to restore balance is to soothe, comfort, and appease Sedna. In order to coax her into releasing the sea animals, a shaman, known as an Angakuk, must enter a trance-like state and placate Sedna by gently combing out the painful knots and tangles from her hair. Only when this is accomplished will Sedna's agitation pass, and she will release the sea's bounty. Sedna is immensely powerful, in more ways than one. Though she goes by many names, and her story changes from region to region, she began her life from humble origins and suffered immensely from the cruelty of others. She is a survivor of violent assault, romantic deception, and psychological abuse. Yet she emerged as one of the strongest and most deeply relied upon goddesses in mythology. Sedna's depths of depression and fonts of rage and mistrust are as profound as the sea in which she lives. And yet, with her control over the sea and all of its creatures, the lives of the Inuit people lay in the palms of her fingerless hands.